All right, guys, so I just want to take a second to share with you what we got going on here. We are at the Wildlife Refuge here in Maryville, Tennessee. That is what we've got going on. Our pond that we're going to be building has been in the design phase, so to speak, for the better part of five years is what we have had. There's a space that has just been neglected. They didn't know what to do with it. They had no idea what was going on, but they knew they wanted running water. So we finally settled on a 1500 gallon koi pond, a bunch of extra aquatic plantings, because apparently outside of this lovely abundance of creatures, like this guy you see right here, they have a hard time keeping land plants alive because they don't like watering them. So we're going overboard with our outcroppings and stuff inside of the liner on this pond to create additional aquatic planting space so that they don't have to water to keep everything nice and green in there. We've got 8,000 gallons an hour coming down crazy series of waterfalls, probably close to seven feet wide of different horse kills, random things going on, crazy boulder selection coming that we may or may not be able to set. It's a sad truth, guys. No matter how big of a machine we have, we pick rocks that are like, right at the too heavy limit for it because we can't help ourselves. So that is what we've got going on. I'm gonna take a minute to talk to these guys. Ma! <laughs> All right, we're getting to it. You guys stay tuned. All right, fellas, so one thing I wanna to touch base about, as we all know in a design process for a pond, this being our area that we actually get to work with, you guys are hanging out in the viewing section right now. One of the most important parts of this entire feature is above you guys on the second story porch, and then also down in this hangout zone. So this is the man cave, quote, quote, whatever they wanna call it. This is where the couches, the tables, they are avid football fans, and they find themselves right here on a weekendly basis staring at the screen and as well as having the dream of having the water feature back there with the mountains in the backdrop. That is one thing we're really trying to do here is focus on the pond being in this back corner, the waterfalls being as close to the driveway falling in this direction. And as you can see right now, there is a pretty wild slope going downward off to the side that we are going to have to build inside. It's an existing retaining wall that we're going to have to alter, tear some of that dry stack down. They really were adamant about blowing this entire section of this thing up and having a couple stairs leading up to the one interaction stone in this water feature. So we're gonna have to push our skimmer off to one side, waterfalls going on the opposite end, and make sure that everything can be naturally integrated and happy to actually get from A to B without blocking our access for any of this stuff. So fortunately, the driveway wraps around the entirety of this water feature. Access could not be better. Should be filling by lunchtime. So just wanted to share with you guys the design aspects of this thing because it is important to make sure before you start, know exactly what you're going to be doing, the non-negotiables you have to achieve, and then knock them out. That's what we're doing right now. Get into it. So there's another thing I want to talk about in this design. So what we have on this 10 by 12 pond, this is a relatively smaller water feature for us, believe it or not, 1,000 to 1,500 gallons. It is a smaller water feature. So what I want to talk about is conserving the space. So it would be very easy on a pond of this size to pick all of these beautiful, nice, large boulders and everything and completely fill in the pond where you've got this little three by three area in the middle that actually holds water. 
So as you see in this video, we're carving out all of these different spots, these different curvaceous things. This spot, like what is off to my left leg, this is what I wanna to talk to you guys about. So doing the fish cave in here, we pick out these really nice mountain stone caves that we have transitioned from flagstone to because the flagstone edge is a little bit foreign looking just to us. But we pick out these really nice flat, long mountain stones that we can actually set in, rock around and create our caves with. This horseshoe shape of small mountain stone that you're seeing right in here is just the backdrop for what's going underneath of our cave. So as you saw in the excavation process, we actually get everything dug down and then we mark these U-shapes back in where we know we're going to want our caves so that we don't have to take this U-shaped shelf and begin our cave right here. Because what that would do, especially in a pond this size where you're only gonna have an eight by eight-ish area of deep water, is you're gonna take up three by three of that just with your cave because you didn't plan on where that was going during the excavation process. You wanna be thinking forward, not backwards, because once you get this in, you get your excavation done, your liner in, your seal, coming back into the deep section of your pond and then carving stuff in after you've already set rocks is very, very difficult. It's a little easier to do for the aquatic planting shelves that we talked about, but trying to plan in advance for these things is definitely the way to go as we talked about multiple times as well. Our waterfalls are coming in from behind me. They're falling on top of the fish cave in the opposite direction of the opening of the fish cave, which is going to prevent leaves and debris from collecting in the back of that thing. Because if you design it wrong, you slap it in front of the skimmer or something, it's gonna be half fish, half leaves in there half the time. That's about what you're gonna have. So yeah, think about this stuff. Glad we could share a little bit with you. We're gonna get back at it.